Good morning, guys. Welcome back to our Black Meat Wukong playthrough, where we have to fight again uh, most of these guys out here. But I will go towards the village first and see. Oh, there's a lot of archers over there, though. Okay, yeah, let's do this. Holy moly. Can I open this gate? It does not show that I can open. Maybe after I. Beat this guy. And this is a nice position to not get hit by arrows. Yeah, it looks like I cannot open this gate. So basically, where. Yeah, I think the entrance is in the back. Okay. Oh, and unfortunately, I need to go all the way around. Gotcha. I'm gonna ignore those archers because I can't do much unless I can get to them up there. But yeah, we'll see. Out. Then is that guy over there? Honor not the sage. <laughs> ah. <laughs> of course, now you decide to dodge when I don't want you to. And then you uh, finish the combo. Time to die. Can I reach you? And maybe I could if I. Nope, nope, miss me that. And I'm assuming if I jump across the roofs, ah, then I can absorb this as well. You're out. Gonna kill for a bit on this side. Oh, I'm. Well, I'm basically inside here. That's uh, an interesting monster that I see over there. Let's see. What's that monster over there? And can I open actually the door from this side? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, okay. So let's. At least I have a shortcut. Oh, hi! Uh, why are you down here now? Okay. Just archers? What's going on here? Ah, okay. You're a bit more stronger. By the looks of it. A lot more stronger. Are you like a mini boss? Damn, that took a while. Holy moly. Were you like lost spirit by any chance? I think it might have been. Yeah, rat archer. Okay. This he took quite a beating. A mistake. A mistake. With my respect, I request an audience with your king. Right. Maybe get rid of whatever this is first. Oh, earth wall. Right. Because ow. Ah, maybe I shouldn't not 
I feel. I, I thought they did not have it full. Never mind. And you're actually taking quite a bit. Stamina. There is a plant over here, so gather it. He is a bit far away. Not for a second, we're about to borrow. Okay, I'm out of mana. It's not great. I'm actually kind of out of stamina as well. Ow! Ow! Gabe, come on, I've been using the heal. you kidding me. Uh, man, that was such a BS. I literally had pressed the healing and I was waiting for the animation, but it didn't go through. Ah, come on, really? Right, let's try this again. I don't know who is angry over there. Stamina. Ah, really? Jump right when I was about to hit you. Ow. Ah, okay, uh, there is someone that can help over there. Gotcha. I'll be with you in just a second. Give me a bit. I need to beat this guy here. Yeah, I'll have a war with you, just fan aloud. Can you give me a sec? <laughs> ah! Okay, let's go to run. Am I gonna get his transformation? Yeah, the spirit wolf. Uh, what else is here? Accuracy charge straight to a foe, small amount of additional focus. It uses the stamina cost for staff spin. Eh, not that. Interesting for now. Right, what about the chiefs? Earth Wolf. On moonless nights with winds and that cry, the time for deaths and ventures nigh. 
In kind, Yagwais place your trust, but wicked souls you must defy. There, there was once a general's son who served as a drill master in the barracks. Cruel and ruthless he was, and the soldiers trembled at his commands. Yet, out of respect for the general, they bore the resentment in silence. The drill master, who had a passion for hunting, kept a Chinese seagull, a slender hound. One day he went hunting with several instructors, but he turned empty-handed, much to his shame. He blamed the innocent hound for their failure and had it beaten to death. The soldiers, who had been ordered to kill the hound, were much troubled in spirit. They buried the hound in a field behind the barracks, where many linked sea mushroom, mushrooms grew, and gathered night chant sutras for the repose of its soul. One night, the drill master heard a dog, dog barking outside the barracks. He sent men to seek out the source of the noise, but the barking ceased each time they approached, only to resume once they had returned to sleep. After a few times, the drill master lost his temper and went to investigate himself. As he stood in the yard, he felt the sound came from beneath the, the ground and ordered his men to dig up the earth. As the soil was cleared away, the hound leaped from the earth, appearing as it had in life, but now adorned with thin, thin tentacles, like the roots of some peculiar plant. The drill master, thrilled by this rare find, called to the hound. It recognized its master and bounded joyfully towards him. However, two hard uh, antler-like mushrooms had grown upon its head. As the hound leaped into the drill master's arms, these mushrooms pierced his chest and he died then and there. The, ru the soldiers rushed to call the healers, shouting in panic and confusion. Amid the turmoil, no one thought to catch the hound. Later, no matter how they searched, they never found a trace of it. Damn. Well, that was the way to go and kind of deserved, to be honest. Right. Oh... He's here. What brought you here? Oh, Go. you. Leave. I don't need your help. Well, I, I think you kind of do, but since you're not in a rush, sure, let me look around. Maybe there's some chests or anything more around here. Was this actually a, uh, another path I could have taken? No. Looks like not. All right, my good sir. What's up with you? <laughs> Fate binds us, sir. From the Black Wind Mountain to here, we meet again. Those rats. They tied me up on sight for no reason. Joking, they prepare me for their king's table. <sighs> this place crawls with Yaogwai's eager for a bite. But don't worry. If they bite into me, they'll bite more than they can chew. This place is a jumble of rats and cats, all at each other's throats. And the Yellow Wind Sage keeps silent. How odd. Who would swear fealty to such a king? Let's make haste and go. Never linger at a peril such as this. Just leave. These rats are no match for me. And I can make my own way out. You sure? Am I not gonna help you? You are a skinny one, but these rats aren't picky eaters. Flee! The quicker the better. I won't die here with my task undone. There are too many eyes around here. We'll meet again if fate wills it. Okay, and I get no prompt at all. Oh, I, I thought maybe I'll release him and he's gonna have like a small side quest as the other guy had right after I disposed you of the toad. Oh, come on, I pressed dodge before you. Okay, you're out. Okay. Uh, apparently I can't jump through. 
Gotcha. You should just yeah, take me here. A grim one. God damn it. Okay, you died in a weird position. Right, where are you exactly? Are you on top on top or... Oh, you are on top on top. Gotcha. Can I reach you then? Maybe... Through here? Can I just... I can. Ow! Really? Damn, you managed to hit me quite a bit there. Alright, and... Oh yeah! Are you prepared to come out now? Oh, I don't get any more prompts, so I guess he... He left? Whoever was in there. Really? I'm surprised I got hit there, to be honest. Ah, oh, come on. Really? How are we getting that lucky? I don't know. I forgot that three here. No, no. Okay, sure, whatever. We fell down. Not exactly what I wanted. Whatever. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, still need to. of you first before wait where did he end up did you yeah you fell down whatever you can just stay there up here I believe or the yeah I think there was a chest over there ah I forgot the gate is actually down here Right. Oh, okay. There is actually fall damage. Fall. Ah. Uh, Peter Seek. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to fight this guy. Son, I hear you loud and clear. How can I not know your sufferings? But before our master returns from the valley, we've got to tough it out. Tough it out to survive. The lads went out to see the altar the other day. Said it's stinking worse than ever. And covered in bones. Not from men or livestock, but littered in the remains of our kin. Curse that furry jackass. Ooh, just wait. Wait until Master hears about this! <laughs> Hush! Hush, you fool! Our restoration, and we can't say it out loud now! <laughs> oh, you poor brother, Adam! <laughs> Am I interrupting? What's that smell? Aye, that's fresh meat, delivering itself all the way to this dump for our lunch. Um, not fighting both of you, right? Ah, uh, well, actually, yeah, uh, crap. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a fail, unfortunately. Because I don't have any... I mean, I do have some healing, but... 
Oh, only one more charge. Sure, whatever. Sometimes this seems like there's a delay in the dodge. Like literally, I press dodge right now. Never mind. Uh. Uh, I did not have all my stuff anyway, so it's fine. Probably just gonna rush, avoid all these guys. Hopefully, I'm not gonna get hit while trying to get there. Okay, I don't need a bit of stamina. And hey, okay. I'm back, boys. I have everything. Really? Again, I was in freaking dodge. Okay, you have way too big a brain with that thing. I'm sorry, why did it hit me there? I was doing shockwave attacks. Okay, we do have a shockwave attack. Okay, and a bit of stamina. I knew he was gonna attack. I still got hit while trying to dodge. Come on, game! I'm literally dodging. Are you kidding me? Freaking delay in the dodge. Yeah, this might be another fail, unfortunately. Unfortunately, okay. Ah, really? Again, 
literally hit me right when I was about to hit him. Wait, what? Am I not fighting balls? <laughs> oh. Chief. What's this to examine? Nice. I want to let it play. Right. Uh, I saw the shrine over there. And I'm gonna risk it for a biscuit. Alright, there you are. You're out. Thank you. Uh, I see you there. And I see you there. Right, which direction are you coming from? Oh, you're busy attacking something. Okay, where's the other one? Ah, you're here. Okay, hopefully that's all of them down here. Ah, and now that I think about it, I had potions as well. Yeah, I'm surprised. I was actually expecting to fight both. And I did notice that he, well, the father was on the ground as well. So I'm curious if it would have been possible like to focus on the father get him out and then maybe the son would have left hmm who knows I mean if the game would have let you that is right I'm assuming that would be the way to go the game is telling me about this shrine, which I need to use anyway. Plus, looks like there's a cave. Let's get the shrine. Thank you. Nothing in terms... I mean, I do have some skill points, but again, I'm gonna hold on to them for now. And... What do I have in inventory? Shock welling powder. Oh, looks like I got a shock resistance potion. I don't need to make. But let's see about the royal family of flowing sands. A foolish son, a clever father. One plans ahead, the other rather. On the battlefield, no room for kin. The cunning father flees, leaving his son within. The Kingdom of Flowing Sands had three princes of the royal line. The eldest prince, favored by the king, was a renowned warrior for his valor in the battles against the Fuban. 
he was granted the title of Valiant, Valiant General. But later, a shadow darkened his mind, clouding his reason and erasing his memories of his kin. Thus, he was hidden away. The king was heartbroken. Luckily, two of his sons yet remained. The third prince, the youngest and the king's most trusted, was well versed in poetry and deeply fond of Buddhist teachings. He possessed both wisdom and strength. However, when the king issued the rodent reverence edict and executed those ministers who opposed it, the third prince left in protest. Wrath consumed the king, but one of his sons still remained. The second prince, though a man of great strength, was a simple of mind. He was neither a skilled warrior as his elder brother nor as clever as his younger sibling. Of the three sons, he was the least favored by the king. Nevertheless, he remained by the king's side the longest. When the Yellow Wind King re retrieved a mighty vessel and returned, the King of Flowing Sands rallied to his banner with what remained of his people, hoping to reclaim his lost kingdom. The Yellow Wind King, short on the man, saw the fierce spirit in, in the second prince and welcomed him and his followers into his ranks. But the Yellow Wind King had a tiger vanguard, whose hunger for red flesh required a fresh feast each day. When the Yellow Wind King retreated into his meditating seclusion, the tiger grew even bolder. Only the savage might of the second prince's hammer could give him pause from time to time. Much did the second prince sacrifice for his father, the king, yet through all the perils and hardships they endured, the king of flowing sands never failed to bring the eldest prince with him and continuously sent minions to seek out the youngest. What thoughts dwelled in the heart of the second son, none could say. Oh man, again a bit of a sad story. Right. Okay, I'm not going into that cave yet. Because I remember about the bridge. Also, maybe this is not the main way. Let's just see what's across the bridge. What would be... I think that loops around. Right, I see somebody over there. That's... I think where it was the meditation spot. If I remember correctly. And I can drop down here if need be. But it's fine. Right. Damn, I really have no idea which would be the right way, like to advance the story. So I guess, uh, yep, let's get the plant in the meantime. Of course, another view. Efforts, really? That much damage? Go down already, thank you. Right, let's see what's we this one. Requires sternness of stone, keenness of tiger. Okay, I need to insert something here. Ah, all right. You know, since I'm near the shrine and I haven't, well, I just fought those guys in the river and this last guy I'm just gonna rest have full life and call Bonga into the cave we go then we are in dire times I really You're out. 
Ah, it's just one archer? Really? The timing on this. And where is this taking me? Uh, this actually might be the right way. Yep, there he is. Wait, what are you doing? Whoa, what the? For a life. Um, first prince of the uh, holy moly, son, your brother's gone. Help me and atone for your past now. No, are you mad? Go and hunt the monkey. I'm your father. Ow. Well, was. <laughs> okay. Are we gonna fight now? Oh, not exactly. I still need to go down. Is this actually like a dead end? Looks like there's a door here. Locked from the other side. I mean, I do have kind of everything with me. I can easily, f well, I say easily. We might get our ass handed to us like, really quick. Just gonna look around for the moment, see if this is actually a dead end up towards. Wait, something is throwing stuff at me. Ow! Is that him or who the hell is? No, seriously, who's throwing that stuff? He's down there. Can I... Oh, you. What the hell are you? Uh... Let's see if I wanna... Okay, there's... Now a lot of things I can explore around. No, do not want to drop down completely. Where are you exactly? Right here. Now, definitely I do need to get rid of you if I am to engage the first prince. Okay, that's a locked entrance. Oh, the okay, inventory. I get. I think it's just the uh, yeah, materials. Blaze bone. On the road, bare bones on display. Fresh, rotted, decayed, faded away. Long gone, forgotten in name. His homeland lost in death's claim. In the land of Yellow Wind Ridge, where relentless winds rage day and night, the tomb mounds were often ravaged by the mighty gusts, revealing the exposed bones, a sight all too familiar. One day, a hurried merchant found himself passing through Yellow Wind Ridge on an urgent matter. 
However, the villagers warned him of the terrible danger and refused to be his guide. After walking alone for hours, the merchant rested by the roadside, eating his rations. It was then that he noticed a set of skele skeletal remains in the withered grass. The bones were incompletely due to greedy vultures and wolves. Were you slain by bandits lying here in this desolate place? Or like me, did you find no joy in life and choose to end it yourself? Overwhelmed with sorrow, the merchant sighed and he looked upon the skull and wondered aloud. You now lie uncovered in the wilderness, and I can only imagine the sorrow your family must feel. Moved by compassion, he untied his bundle, weeping as he began to dig the grave to bury the remains. Suddenly, the skeleton sat up, startling the merchant, who fell to the ground and scrambled backwards in fear. Using bony hands to support himself, the skeleton approached the merchant and pushed the bundle towards him. Astonished, the merchant cautiously accepted the bundle and resumed his journey. The skeleton followed him from a distance, and together they traveled peacefully for hours. Gradually, the merchant let his guard down and removed his inner shirt to drape it over the skeleton's frame. From that moment on, when the, whenever a strange noise arose, the skeleton would guide the merchant to take cover behind rocks. With further if glances, the merchant would then witness Guai's passing by the path. For several days, they continued on this way until the merchant finally reached the main road again. That was the moment the skeleton ceased to move. Grateful for its companionship, the merchant offered to transport the skeleton's remains back to his homeland. However, after a moment's hesitation, the skeleton turned and walked back, walked back into the swir swirling sands of the ridge. Perhaps it had already forgotten where it came from. Oh, that was kind of sweet. Okay, I might need to use one of the potions as well. Damage. I need the stamina to generate a bit. God damn it, took too long to heal. of decoy okay, last heal no oh. ah come on that was me dodge okay I'm gonna wait for... try to wait for the stun I'm gonna need it Cool. Ooh. Oh, I got a quest item actually. Gold piece. Uh, updated. Ah, 
first prince of the flowing sands. Fearless, yet strength prevails. Bold and sturdy, never frail. Madness hides in the mountain, where winds sing. In dark gutters, reigns as king. The yellow-furred rat, yeah, rat had quelled the calamity caused by Fuban, earning the king's deep respect and being appointed as the royal sage. No matter the state affairs or the minutiae of daily life, the king would first seek his counsel. At the sage's suggestion, the king issued the Rodent Reverence ed Edict, prompting Rodent guys from all around the to migrate into the city. The first prince, having distinguished himself in battle, was co conferred the title of Brave General and was basking in his success. However, he was deeply displeased that a Gwai sage had stolen his shine. Using the pretext of the rodent Gwais causing trouble, he rallied court officials to petition for the royal sage's removal. Several upheavals ensued in the court, resulting in the deaths of many loyal to the prince, and even the third prince left in anger. Yet, the king's trust, the sage, remained unshaken. On the sage's birthday, the entire kingdom worshipped his statue, and even the king paid a visit to the temple of royal sage himself to offer incense and prayers. Unable to contain his fury, the first prince overturned the incense table in public. Such an affront to royal authority could not be tolerated. Enraged, the king imprisoned the prince. The sage, however, was not angered and even spoke many good words for the brave general. Learning of the sage's intercession, the prince became even more convinced that he was deeply scheming evil Guai, cursing him incessantly in his cell. The king, upon hearing this, grew more antagonized by his unruly son. Hence, he decreed that the prince needed strict discipline, ordering that his meals be delivered to the cell door thrice daily, with no visitors allowed. Initially, the prince was very stubborn, but over time, he softened and began to plead for mercy, yet he remained defiant in his heart, constantly plotting to kill the rodents and avenge himself once he was free. One day, his meal was late, and he was growing anxious. Then he heard the sound of a key turning, and the cell door unexpectedly opened. After waiting for a while and seeing no one enter, he walked out himself. To his astonishment, the guards and officials bustling about outside were no longer human. They all became rats dressed in robes. The prince thought it was the sage that led the rodent guys to observe the throne, and in his panic, he charged into his father's golden hall. A short, stout rat, speaking in his father's voice, called out to him. This must be an imposter. The prince grabbed the guard's sword and struck at the king. Chaos erupted in the hall. Only the royal sage brought forth a bronze mirror for the prince to see himself. In, in, in the reflection, there was no trace of the brave general. Only an enormously fat rat. Damn. Uh, then, it's like these are yeah quest items. But I don't think it's the one that I need to put on that small pedestal. Right in here. I believe it was this one. I'm going in. Yeah. That. Ah, really? That might actually be the right way to go. But. Also. It might be a shrine after going inside there. I'm just gonna go back. I can find a way, actually. Ah, okay. This was. A different thing should be through here then go back through here that's the door that only opens from the other side but yeah I'm gonna go to this shrine rest and actually maybe 
check more on the other side to see where was the shrine ah here okay I'm gonna rest now and I'm gonna leave it here for this episode yeah interesting fights interesting stories and can't wait to see what's next will I meet the last son what was it the third one the youngest maybe we'll see but for now hope you enjoyed this episode guys and I'll see you next time but as always don't forget to take care